My name is Sean Domigal Goldman. I'm a research space scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And Sean, are we alone? Well, I don't know. What's, what's exciting to me is that that's a question we've been asking for a long time. And in our lifetime, we're gonna turn that into a testable hypothesis. And that's cool. When I asked you the question, are we alone? Yeah. What did you understand by the word we? Biosphere. The biosphere. Yeah. Half the people I talk to think we humans, and half the think, you know, all life on Earth. But yeah. you're, a, you're a biosphere kind of guy. I think of the aggregate uh, that life presents on Earth as we. Is that a more in interesting question to you than are we humans alone in the universe? I think they're both interesting. I think the search for biospheres is one that we can probe more directly in our scientific lifetimes with the scientific method. Uh, we can actually do both. Uh, uh, and actually, a better way to phrase it is that we can, the stuff I work on is more focused on the we as a biosphere. Um, and that's partially because that's what you need to build space telescopes to do, which is one of the things I work on. There are many other life forms on Earth. Oh, yeah. Therefore, humans are not alone yes. on Earth. Therefore, we're not alone in the universe. So the question doesn't make any sense. Uh, un unless the question is, are there other advanced, intelligent uh, edX making life forms elsewhere? Okay, so then uh, we are alone on Earth. <laughs> well, we as a biosphere are alone uh -huh. so far. Um, we as an organism are certainly not alone. We as an intelligent uh, organism uh, in the in the cosmos thus far are alone. That's the way I would phrase it. Okay. And and I think. Uh, looking for other organisms that are relatively like us in that intelligent, advanced, you know, and I know those are those are weighted words. I, in that sense, um, that is a compelling search, although it's not the, the search that I participate in or think about most of my days. So if we find microbes in the plumes of Enceladus, we would no longer be alone? By, by my thinking, that's correct, yeah. Because I think, again, I think we as a biosphere, and then that would constitute another biosphere. But a lot I, of people don't care about microbes, and they say, I'm still alone. I can't talk to those guys. Therefore, I'm still alone. They should care about microbes because a <laughs> large should. part of those people are microbes, right? So They've you, got a microbiome. When you, in when them. you tell these people you should care, does that work? I think so because, because the questions are not uncorrelated. You know, if we find life on Europa, if we find ancient evidence of life on Mars, if, or existing life on Mars, if we find evidence of life that might not be advanced or intelligent or communicating on an exoplanet, those things would make the presence or likelihood, the presence of advanced intelligent communicating life uh, more likely beyond our solar system. So they're not uncorrelated questions. Even if all you care about are the aliens you see in Hollywood movies, you care about microbes on Enceladus. Really? I think so. So what fraction of the world's population cares about microbes on Enceladus? Uh, I haven't done the survey. What do you think? I think most people at a fundamental level, okay. because of that higher level question, right? Yeah. Um, it it speaks to our place in the cosmos. Whether, however you define the we, are we alone is a first order question that I think people are profoundly interested, or are, are inherently interested in. What do you know about aliens? Uh, nothing. Have you ever seen one? No. Been abducted by one? Uh, no. Nope. Ever been visited by aliens in your dreams? No. Uh, you have a favorite alien movie? Oh, um, prob you know, I've, I've, I've been a Star Wars fan my whole Star life. Wars, yeah. okay. Star Wars. Uh, although there's a huge caveat mm. to all my notes. Yeah, <laughs> I like, yeah, Wookiees are cool. Uh, huge caveat to everything I just said. If, if aliens exist, then I know lots of aliens from their perspective. How's that? Well, you're an alien from their perspective. Oh, oh so I see, I. I see, okay. Do you think we're living in a simulation from some that made by some advanced civilization? No, but I can't prove it. And to a certain extent, this is, a, I was actually a double major in philosophy in my first year of college, and we got to the point where we could be proved we couldn't prove anything. Oh, you proved that you couldn't prove that sounds and, and then interesting. The, and then I just didn't want to be a philosophy major anymore. Right, and you changed the <laughs> math, like, right? <laughs> okay. Um, do you. If I gave you $100 billion with the caveat you have to spend it to try to answer the question, are we alone, how would you spend it? Uh, I'd spend it, $100 billion is a lot. Yeah. Um, we could do a lot with that. I would uh, send a rover to Mars to collect samples, bring them back home. I would send something through the plumes of Europa to collect a sample, bring it back home, or, or land on Europa and, and get down to the, the oceans there. Uh, and I'd build a giant space telescope 
and, and look for signs of life on planets around other stars. Um, and, and I do all three. I don't lean into one because if I've got a, a larger budget, like $100 billion, I think I can probably do all three. And, and I think the things we learn from a coordinated search for life, like, like, a, like you know, in that, in that sense, um, is greater than we'd learn from doing a detailed search on just one location. No money for SETI? Oh, yeah, I do SETI as well. But actually, you know, what's interesting about that is, is, the stu is most of the proposals to do SETI, in terms of their cost, are, are lower than the things I mentioned in terms of building spacecraft to send uh, to space, no to, to other planets. No right. money to send postage stamps to Alpha Centauri? Again, sh we can do that. Um, oh, you mean like a flyby? Yeah. Like a, like, or... um, I think we do that personally. I think we do that once we know, once we know the address to send things to. So, you know, doing a flyby to a star is good. Doing a flyby to a star with a with a known planet is better. Better than that is doing a flyby to a planet for which we've got some degree of chemical and ideally uh, biological characterization uh, having been done already. So, you know, if we do a space telescope and it finds evidence of life, um, you know, we can talk about confidence levels, but if we, if we find evidence of biosignatures on one of these planets around another star, to me, that's at the point where you think about doing the flyby and sending the postage, postage stamp. No money for microscopes to look for nano alien spacecraft in this room? Oh, I'll, yeah. So, so uh, what I explained to you was like the, the big budget items that would, that would consume most of that $100 billion. Okay. To assess the data from Mars or Europa or Enceladus or exoplanets, you actually need a huge scientific community. Uh, that still costs a lot of money, right? Millions of dollars. Uh, maybe in the you know, a bit one or two billion dollars a year range, but that's not that's not going to be on the same size cost-wise as as the the hardware you're you're sending out to space. 